This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You're not gonna do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know it. I know. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the inaugural episode of Only Friends Podcast. Podcast brought to you by Solve for Why and my collection of friends who have helped me build this company to what it is today. Uh, we're gonna introduce everybody one by one very briefly, let you guys understand a little bit of the premise of the show. Then we're getting into some news and notes in the poker world and take on the conversation of uh, the, the more popular topics that are floating around the Twitter sphere as we speak. First and foremost, as always, my co-host on the ones and twos, Mr. Christian Soto. So good to be back, man. I thought you, I thought you were out of the, the sphere. People were like, you know, they thought I was like with Tom Dwan in the dungeon with like the Chinese. And you, that, said, you sent me uh, or you tweeted at me saying that, uh, you know, I, I adopted the darkness, but you were born into it. Yeah. I thought that was a little subtle hint that we weren't going to see you here anymore. <laughs> nah, man, come on, man. Like if the mic is on, people know I'm going to be around. Like they don't know, you know. That's how it is. The problem is we don't know what you're going to say, which is why we can't go live. Well, it's taped to live. You know, things get edited in and out. Right, like, yeah. the people like it like this. Yeah. They know they know what they're in for. If there's a Trulies on here, then they don't know what they're in for. And I don't know what they're in for. It's, things that, you know, it's like going to an Asian restaurant when they ask for the level of spiciness. And uh, you just always say five and then... Well, just, I'm, yeah. I'm like uber white, so it's like I, I'll take a one. They're like, we don't do... No, one. there's no one. And First of all, why even go out if you're going to order a one? Just, right, right. So it's like, you know, when you show up, automatic five minimum. Yeah. Trulies get added to the, to the table. No, yeah. Th this, it's weird because, like, when we do those kind of shows, when I leave, I'm like, what did I say? Because I have no idea. I just blacked out. But, but it's good to be back, man. I'm, I'm happy that, that we're doing this and we have all of our people here. I think it's going to be a great show. We do have our people. Uh, so moving on from Christian, who's a co-founder of Solve for Why, we're going to get into one of my oldest friends, uh, known since Little League, we played on the same ball team together, uh, came up through the streets of Leechburg. He's now the manager of Salt for Y, and I'm very humbled and fortunate that he didn't kick my ass in high school when he had the opportunity to. You're lucky, man. Brian You're really lucky. LaManna, welcome. How's it going, man? How's it going? Good to Good. have a fellow Yinzer on the set. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Got, Got this nice backdrop here, the, uh, the Clemente Bridge. You really did get the 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 best shot, and uh, you know, don't tell Conrad, who's next to you, because he thinks that's actually the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, representing New York. But <laughs> it it is a staple of our hometown. Yeah, it leads right to PNC Park. That's right. It's a uh, it's a beautiful bridge. It, it really, really is. is. It's really City nice. of bridges, if you will. Yeah, we got some whiskey here too. Just yeah, you case. and Conrad getting lit today. Well, I mean, you know, it's, we got to start the show off, right? We definitely start the show off right. For those who don't know, uh, this is actually our second take well, because yeah. we had uh, a little bit of a faux pas in the first go around. That's I when I decided I should start drinking. Yeah. You decided to start drinking. The rest of us decided we had to do the responsible thing, take it down, do another run. And, uh, you know, here we are. Thanks to, thanks to Mr. Conrad. Oh, <laughs> Oh, that's where this is going. Welcome <laughs> to the set, Mr. Let's Get It Poppin' himself. How what, are you doing, sir? What is good? Conrad has held many roles within the company, everything from makeshift editor to uh, dealer to all-around clown for the production team. I'm pretty confident. I got fired from all roles. You're still dealing. <laughs> You're still dealing, but you're really flirting with it. Like we have other sure. dealers who are competent and don't get up for a Pepsi break mid hand. That's true. Uh, so, you know, there is a little bit of a sweat that you're kind of going through these days, but now, now you've solidified yourself in a new role. And what you may not know, but it is actually fact is that the reason you're on this set is for a real life laugh track. I mean, Sounds about right. We we couldn't afford <laughs> we couldn't afford the uh, the studio produced one, and there's no room in here for a live audience. Sure. So we decided to just get Conrad on set, uh, you know, cue up the jokes. You'll go ahead and knock them out of the park for us, and we'll just <laughs> see. This is what I'm talking about. I love a good courtesy laugh. You're 
<laughs> Brian, you're less than never courtesy. You guys oh, don't know. Man. Never hey, courtesy, cheers, my man. Buddy. Cheers. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lamana was the king of getting courtesy laughs in high school. They're one of just from friends. Randy. Yeah, one no, of our he's the only Randy. one. He no, laughed at everything. Lamana's That's why I love jokes him. are so corny that they are fucking hilarious. Yeah, you can't tell right. me different. What, what I have our, a stick. One of our good friends <laughs> in high school. Uh, this is honestly what almost led to me fist fighting Lamana. Is he was so not funny. But our one friend. Oh my god, just I'm laughed so funny. Everything. Really? And he used to run around and just like pretend to be a velociraptor. And he would just walk around when people were unsuspecting and get up in their face and go, ah! <laughs> and I do it. Randy, out of nowhere, I would do like, a good sprinting around a corner and just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, make this bit <laughs> stop, please. Nope. Now here I am, 30 years later, still stuck with the guy. Hey. Someone's got to keep this company going. That's right. You do keep it afloat. <laughs> uh, getting us in touch with the younger generation, the kitty corner. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kitty corner. Name awesome. and I vetoed it. We, we got to change the name. He asked me to make a sign that said kitty corner. And I said that rhymes with kitty porn. So we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, in my defense... No. My preschool that I went to growing up was you, called Kitty Quarter. Yeah. Very different times. Yeah, different How? times. <laughs> and not helping your kids. This was like this is like 50 years ago, man. <laughs> yeah. Not helping my kids at all. Uh, so we're joined by Poo Dog Melissa and Tice is nice, young Landon Tice. Tice is nice. <laughs> That's not what the shirt says. What's it? What does it say? It's Tice Knits. Tice Knits. Tice Knits. I, I have to admit, uh, Love a good I did not get it me for quite some time. He had to explain it to me. Yeah, I got it. I just didn't like it either. But it's a, it's a good for its purpose. I think the thing is, is that what threw me is you told me that it's just sold in the Bellagio gift shop. Where it, I thought it was a specially made t-shirt for you. That's what I thought. I don't think so. it was in the Bellagio gift shop. I think it was just in a... There's a YouTuber named Danny Duncan, and this is Danny Duncan's shirt. Oh, so he had it specially made. Someone did, not the Bellagio, yes. Okay, this is way more reasonable. I thought that this was just like an off-the-rack shirt. That it, it can't, I mean, if it is, it's, it's, they should need to change it. Yeah, the irony would just be Yeah, bad. it seems like a better, like... But people if, can't see the shirt, though, right If now. you're looking for it, it makes sense. That's yeah, true. yeah, yeah, you gotta you move that, that so that you can see the shirt. There, there we go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. Uh, so... For those boomers out there, much like myself, that don't quite get it, uh, it's a play on the nice tits, yeah. which right over my head. Never saw it coming. Shocker, really. <laughs> Last but not least, as he is probably the most important man in this whole run of show, Andre Hankshua, Mr. Black Belt himself, recently uh, earned his stripes in judo, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. You got it. Th th thanks for the confirmation. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say karate or kung fu or something like that. It could have no, come off. I said jujitsu in the first. I'm attempt. just saying it could have come off very racist. Sure. Uh, hey, I am not a racist individual. Just because <laughs> I'm from the middle of nowhere, blue collar America, does not mean that we do not enjoy all walks of life. It's day one. Don't cancel us yet. It's a good yeah. sound bite. <laughs> it's like yeah. Cause I guess yesterday was day zero. <laughs> <laughs> day one. Day. <laughs> yeah. Multiple, Multiple flights. flights. Uh, the good the news for Andre is, is that since we're doing our second run, we forgot to include the media of his. Nope, two. I got oh! it. Oh, he did not. You stop it right there. He is a double gold medalist. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Thank you. What a guy. Best what in the world. A man. Woo! Best that in the Andre world. Wow. wow. What a man. Come at uh, me, bitches. People don't know this, but the actual backstory to him becoming a black belt was uh, him and I having a sit-down lunch and me saying, look, Andre, um, I don't know how to say this. I get a lot of flack. People out there in the Twitter sphere, they're coming at me hard. Uh, I'm, I'm a lover, not a fighter. You know, I, I can't get these hands dirty. What can you do for me? He goes, I got you. Trained for five years, and now he's my personal bodyguard. <laughs> That's right. And you know what, Berkey? I just want you to know that there's a new generation that are training me as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be a bad bitch bodyguard for you. Oh, oh, I see. I see. So we're, we're getting the kids in the mix, if you will. Bad bitches only. I mean, they, they know all the new meta. Mm -hmm. We are the meta. I, I thought that they were just going to fight my word battles for me with uh, memes. Which I, 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 I You've been doing that yourself. Yeah. I have. 
uh, uh, new Twitter, Twitter strategy, strategy that I, I took about six months ago, and it's been working out <laughs> flawlessly, is reply only with GIFs. Yeah. Because what's more concise than a GIF? There's no lot. There, there's no uh, loss of translation here. You know, it's just very clear. A guy face palms. We know what that means. <laughs> no more nuance for Berkey. Nope. We've lost the two syllable words. Oh. We only have GIFs now. <laughs> Not sure. This will be able to understand what you're trying to say now. Yeah. Shout out to Brent Hanks for that one. He used the same gift for about 18 months. <laughs> Clint Eastwood. The Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> he likes All that right. one, and he also likes the Big Lebowski one. Yeah, he loves the Big Lebowski one. Yeah. Uh, Got to get Brent on here. That would be pretty great. Yes. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about this show, what it is, why we're doing it, and uh, why on earth people should care. Um, I guess I'm to blame for this. So you're welcome or I'm sorry, uh, depending on how you take that news. Uh, I kind of just see poker as this space that has, has kind of hit uh, a bit of a plateau where we're kind of in a situation to take it by the reins. And I don't mean like we as in me or you or anyone in this room, but I mean like we as the community. Uh, it's, it's not like other sports, right? There isn't a dedicated media necessarily to this sphere. And because of that, we lose the pundits, we lose the water cooler talk, we lose the day-to-day conversation that should be making this realm pretty interesting. So given that you know we've all played for a living at some point in this room, um, varying from just a couple of years for Landon and Melissa, all the way up to 20 years for me, um, I think that you know we have a pretty educated opinion on a lot of topics. Now, we're not gonna be experts on much, it's more of a variety show. We're going to discuss personal uh, lifestyle stuff. We're going to talk about crypto. We're going to talk about all the ancillary markets to poker and day-to-day uh, activities, news, and notes. But uh, I think we can do it in a pretty lighthearted way. Um, we're all friends. At some point in time, I've lived with each and every one of you. So it's not like there are a lot of secrets in this room. And I think that we can kind of put a fun twist on uh, the boring everyday to grind for everybody who is kind of in this sphere. Um, with that said, uh, I don't want this to be like a heavy handed strategy show. So uh, the reason why the seven of us are collected here is because it's a bunch of different personality types. You know, Not everyone here is uh, old man boomer Berkey, who's super dry and, and not getting it done. You know, we got Conrad the Laugh Track. We got Christian the Spice. We got young Landon Tice over there. Who's He's literally in the middle of a hand. He's yeah. just like... I can see him. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe he bet the river. <laughs> what so the fuck funny. is wrong with the internet? <laughs> the balls on this guy. What I'm happened? really I'm really excited to like get the takes from Melissa because... I don't, I, well, first of all, we're facing each other, so it's like we kind of understand each other's vibe. And just like... <laughs> Just like True. all the pre-production stuff is like, yeah, let's definitely talk about astrology, get Berkey tilted, and let's talk about like all these things. I and know it, how to tilt Berkey. And it's and so I, fun. It, it's fun. It's we were talking really about fun. Like, like manifesting fun. before when mm-hmm. you were outside. I mean, well, that's a real thing. <laughs> I was I, talking I can, about I can, my subliminals. Manifesting is a thing. You're but, uh, all idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I'm, really, I'm really excited for the Vanessa takes. Uh, I mean, sorry. No. Oh. <laughs> Ah. Okay, <laughs> we will talk about Vanessa later because there are some things, but definitely we're talking about Melissa this time. I have good takes, I think. Oh, Not to man. toot my own horn. You good takes. And you this could... is why I'm here. Well, if anyone's been <laughs> a better time to segue, why don't we dive straight into the news and notes of today's episode. So first and foremost, uh, new Poker Out Loud episode out <clears> on Soft <throat> YTV. For those of you who are members, you can go ahead and check that out. It's me, Christian, Landon. Chris Convalinka, Nick Howard, and Nate Sierski battling it out in the 510 streets. Uh, we did a fun little giveaway this week uh, where Nick played a hand versus Landon. We analyzed his river decision uh, and posted a, uh, a little snippet of it, asking the audience to guess what Nick's hand was. We're going to show you that clip now before we get to the winner. Pretty similar analysis here, as I stated on the turn. Hand is just trying to get to showdown, and I have better candidates for bluffs. Uh, zero showdown value candidates that I could use 
I don't need to blow up this hand. In fact, it'd probably be a significant mistake to do so. Okay. okay, so at this point, very clear value bet. We want to choose a size that makes his pairs feel relatively not indifferent because a 10 always calls, an eight always calls, a seven always calls. But those hands such as four, five, um, and some poor kickered seven X that exists, some seven, five as well. So we have a pretty clear value bet. Half pot's too small. So we are going to go for a pot size bet and target his one pair hands. So there is 50, 60, 70 in the pot, and we bet 70. This looks like 70. Can I count? Bet 70. 70 is the bet. Landon bets the pot. The size of the bet matters here in my head. I mean, it's a tricky formation to begin with. Um, the 1.0 version of what I'm looking at is I'm facing a large river bet sizing in a line that's definitely not underbluffed on average in terms of what the pool data says. Uh, typically, I think I arrive here trying to call down aggressively with pairs. Landon's bet size being the size of the pot makes me less interested in doing that. I don't think I should really analyze it any further than that. I mean, I could go into more of like a range comp for him, but the methodology that I like to train with sort of flies above the radar of micro ranging. It includes that, but I feel like it keeps you a bit more grounded in the sense that it tries to distill things down to, is this a spot that's consistently over bluffed, balanced or under bluffed? Um, and I think I'm in sort of a gray zone right now where the fact that he's used this size up probably allows me to sleep at night folding a few extra pairs. I look down at the quality of my pair. Um, it's probably one of the worst pairs that I had, uh, that I have just in, in terms of its removal components. Like I don't block any of his two pair sets. So with that said, um, I think it's just the type of spot where I'm gonna let it go and uh, justify it by stating that I, I don't think I'm very exploitable by folding my worst pairs here. I don't think it's a spot that's necessarily uh, significantly overbluffed by him, if it's overbluffed at all for that sizing. Uh, so I'm just gonna pick a better spot to, uh, to make a stand. Excellent fold, Nick. Excellent fold. It took you three minutes to get there and a lot of microaggression, <laughs> but we're... Hey. Give it up. Hell of a lay down, kid. Oh my Hell God. Lay down. Oh my Man, God. Big, you were wrong. big pot, you big there. pot, yeah. <laughs> uh, pocket fives was the correct answer. 218 guesses. Only six people guessed pocket fives. Now, to be fair, or maybe not to be fair, uh, King X was a more popular guess than pocket fives on a king high board as far as what hand Stop Nick it. should not be bluffing. <laughs> I can't make this up. At least 25 people guessed some version of king x for 10x on king 10 <laughs> xxx. Stop, I bro. Swear That's 10%. Yeah, but apparently right, we're, we're charging. We're, we're, not charging we're, not enough. Enough. we're not charging enough. We're back to this topic. <laughs> It's a we're charging. We're not charging. It's enough. a good bluff. You might even get called by worse. One guy, one guy posted. Uh, it's a micro merge. One, yeah. one guy posted King Aggression. Ten. Nobody else read this question correctly. Where's my prize? And I'm yeah. just like, these bluffing top two. Your prize is the door. It has right. to be a troll, well, right? Get out of here. All right, I, I do want to. Um, so we have to congratulate somebody. Yeah, yeah. So Joe Lafuria, uh, congratulations of the six people who had guessed it correctly. You were entered into a drawing. Joe was the winner. He is going to get a piece of Poker Out Loud swag, little t-shirt. La, La Furia? La Furia. La Furia. You know what that means? La Furia, no. The Fury. The, the Fiery, yeah. Oh, the Fire. Joe yeah. the Fire! Yeah, he's that's getting, sick. Well, I'll tell you what, he's getting some fire fucking swag. La Furia, he's yeah. He's getting a Poker Out Loud, I think it was season five. No, it's just the just the um, basic. No, no, I mean like the, the graphic. I think that came with There's the shirt five. for those of you. Maybe it did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think that was the season five one. Yeah, so real quick, let's uh, let, let's talk about this. So we just finished, uh, you know, we, we finished recently filming Poker Out Loud. Yep. 
episode two of this season dropped yesterday. Yeah. It was, uh, there was some hands with Landon, some you, me. Like, what, what, what were your thoughts of this season? Um, honestly, this is, this is not a, a huge... Um, well, it kind of is. It, it's, it's, a, it's a tongue-in-cheek kind of phrase, so to speak. Uh, it's, it's great in the sense that everyone plays remarkably well. But that sucks. <laughs> like, I went back and watched season one and two. It's so it's entertaining, man. Yeah, like, course. season two, Kelly Minkin has ace deuce off of... I literally open kings, chin flats, and Minkin squeezes. And as it comes back to me, I was just like, she got some fuck shit. She has, like, ace x off suit. And we both know it. <laughs> and, like, chin's trapping me through his flats. So I'm just going to call here, and he's going to back four bet. Like, that's some real in-game yeah. meta shit. And yeah. it's exactly what happened. She had ace deuce off. You flattened me with jacks. We ended up getting like 200 blinds. And I yeah. just looked like an absolute genius. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That was fun. It was, it was fun because now, we... It, now, we're debating whether or not you should be folding <laughs> eights to a low jack open half the time. <laughs> That's, what yeah. happened to poker? <laughs> yeah. uh, as the what'd manager you think, you slash think, marketing... What'd you think this time? Huh. Uh, what'd about you think about season? poker all out? Your, yeah, your um, have, I've played on most of the recent seasons and the play in this one is definitely better is such a weird word like more theoretically sound right. you could say because more of the lineup was from a theoretical perspective than prior but there definitely was some different takes that can or cannot be used based off of no rake having rake right, right, having right. a theoretical perspective which is more important than like having an idea of the clarity and the strategy your opponents are playing. So yeah, I think it's definitely a mixed bag. I, I think the difficulty is offering a product that replicates the environment that our students are playing in right? versus offering a structure that incentivizes less uh, predetermined theory, right? Mm. And it's, it's annoying because, okay, fine, we offer them 510, no rate, so it's effectively two blinds, time game, six max, right? Yeah. That's a game that you could find in a casino, but this isn't a lineup that you're gonna find in the casino. That's fair. So it's almost like it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, that yeah. We should be doing things like three blinds, two, like a two, two X, X big blind, blind ante with a two to seven Yeah. Because, because now, now it's like, like you, you don't, don't get to just say, say like, like, oh, well, well in this is I play X percent of hands. It's like, like no, that, that's, that's just like not anymore. anymore. We, we get to go back, back to kind of yeah, I get it. For sure. Boost the seven sure. bounty one thousand percent because from the box it's been getting a little bit more robotic. Yeah, you know, like a little bit more yeah, robotic. Like, the hood, the hood stuff is gone. Like right. Nick's punted the fucking the first two seasons he yeah, was on. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this shit. Nick is just like opening jack nine suited and then folding to a three bet. It's like, all right, man, like, who are you and what have you done with Nick Howard? Yes. And, you know, I, 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 I don't buy it. And then also, like, we have, like, Nate on, and he's not as experienced as the yeah. rest of us. So it's like he played remarkably well for the typical pool that he'll find himself in. But, like, we kind of, like, you know, tr treat him almost as the spot, yeah. right? And that's very unfair. It's like he's a student who's dipping his toes into pretty deep water at this point. Got to respect him, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming from the guy him. that tried to slow roll him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like... Welcome, so welcome right to the passage. game. We'll have a we'll have an entire segment. <laughs> right I am I am who I am. Like it's not gonna like. I am who I am. He's getting me back from doing it to him twice. <laughs> Done it to me. Uh, you failed one time. I did fail one time. I went for the fist bump, and he's just gonna show me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here, dog. <laughs> oh man. Uh, speaking of poker out loud, for anybody who does want to experience this on their own, we actually just uh, transitioned the academy into full poker out loud mode. So. The structure is going to be very different. Before, it was three days where we split the day in half and we did four hours of strategy talk each day, and three hours of gameplay. Uh, now you're going to get a whole lot more. It's four days long. Uh, each day is going to oscillate back and forth between strategy and play. So day one, you'll get eight full hours of strategy content and we will lean heavily on uh, day one actually will be like game theory principles, pre-flop, flop textures, uh, and overall general strategies that you can adhere to. Day two will be eight full hours filmed of Poker Out Loud. So uh, you'll be forced to speak your thoughts in real time. We're gonna provide a template to everybody so that they can kind of uh, have an idea of what to work off of when they're speaking. Because honestly, for most people, this is a pretty jarring uh, environment. It's like really hard 
to come up with strategy in the moment. And I think for a lot of people, they don't understand how little they're actually thinking in real time, right? I'm excited about it. I think just having these people put on the headphones and like explain their thoughts is way better than like they show up the next day and they're like, yeah, I was thinking about right. this. It's like, no, 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 no. What you were yeah, really we thinking about you. is this. Like, it, well, yeah. it's, it's truly an effect, uh, an objective feedback loop, yeah. right? Because we have perfect information. We know what you were thinking. We know what your opponent was thinking and we can see all the whole cards. Yeah, not only that, it's just like a lot of people want the experience of being on, on like a stream, but they also want the experience of like being on poker out loud. Yeah. And now they get, they get both. Yeah. Right, it's like pretty, pretty fire. Yeah, so then day three, we're gonna go into like flop strategies. So we're gonna talk about uh, your C-bet strategies on flop turns and rivers, how you're splitting your ranges, things of that nature. And then day four, you're gonna get another uh, full day of poker out loud. There's a day four? Yeah. Did we raise the price? Yeah. Thank God, little. thank God. <laughs> I only deal two <laughs> days, right? A little bit. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. How, much was it, how much was a little bit? Uh, we raised it 500 bucks. My pay doesn't go down, right? Full day? All right, right. four ninety, four ninety. <laughs> they always get the better deal. They always get yeah. the better deal. You guys always get the better deal. That's, that's good. That's good business. So for anybody interested, those dates are going to be the twenty seventh to the thirtieth. Is that right, Lamanna? It's the twenty seventh to the thirtieth, correct? Yeah, April twenty seventh to April thirtieth. I believe we still have three seats open, and if we fill them, we're going to do a second uh, flight of nine. So uh, just head to solfwide.io if you're interested in partic participating in the Poker Out Loud Academy. Um, moving let's, on. Yeah, let's get into some sh real stuff. We got some, some scandalous shit to talk about. <laughs> it is fiery. Uh, we, we got, For a second time. I'm kind of sad about this. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. What are you sad about? Well, I'm sad because he tried to bluff me in a big pot and it worked out for me. So I lose a little action. Dude, you literally, like, whoever plays against you yeah. just does a crime. Like, it was like... Oh, that's well, true. Like, that's you know? true. I, 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 I want heaps off Dennis Blyden. That's what I'm he saying. He went to jail. Yeah. Uh, I want heaps off Lucky. And and there's stuff. Yeah, he's <laughs> floating around. Who knows what the fuck's going on there. And now? And now my man Gall got pinched. Uh, it looks like he's been indicted on illegal gambling charges as well as money laundering. These are serious... That's serious charges. Yeah, this, this is serious shit. Like, I think it comes with 15 to 25 years. Bro, we were, we, were, we were looking at, like, with Conrad, we were looking at the, what was it, the indictment? Yeah. And it was like, United States of America versus Gaul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, God damn. Yeah, that, <laughs> like, that ain't no joke. No, that's bad for him. So talk, talk to us about, like, you know, what, what were the charges and all that? Like, uh, like so, what happened? So basically, the story, as I understand it, is that he was, uh, he, it's so weird to me because how do you do this without expecting to get caught? Because as far as I understand, he developed like an LLC. At least that's the way the article read mm -hmm. uh, that dealt with gaming in, I guess, like California and other places. But uh, to my knowledge, this stuff isn't legal, like slot machines and gas stations and stuff. It's not like Nevada. You know, they don't have a gaming commission. So uh, I don't know all the, the ins and outs and the legalities of it, but apparently he was like... Facilitating slot machines, machines to like, like gas, gas stations, stations and, and uh, you know quickie marks, marks and things of that nature, nature. Um, and, and obviously, obviously making a bunch of money off it. But because the money's illegal, legal. he was then seemingly laundering it through high stakes poker games, casinos, uh, legitimizing the money, you know, washing it. So to speak. allegedly, Alle allegedly. Not, not alleged. Well, maybe allegedly. Allegedly, but, but he's been indicted, so that's not alleged. <laughs> He hasn't. Yeah, he's innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah I also, I also want to talk about That's real quick, like you know, who Gall is, because you know, some people on this show might not know who Gall is. Like, there's a high stakes, like playing the highest stakes on stream in America. Very known, has fans like yeah. on Hustler and Live at the Bike. Like, very well known character uh, from the LA scene, right? He did kind of pop up out of nowhere though. Uh, he was playing pretty big. Remember that huge call versus art on live at the bike with yeah, like, but, like he popped up around that time frame, right? So like the mm, 2019 mm. time frame, like just before the pandemic, he yeah. started playing a little bit more frequently. That's and fair. that seems to align with when he was doing this business. That yeah, so makes sense. I guess it does make a lot of sense. But also but it also aligns when like Bitcoin popped. Like, you know, it's a yeah, lot sure. of things can happen, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we ain't dry snitching over here. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> You're not supposed to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a huge loss to the high stakes community uh, just because, like, you're right, he did play a lot. And mm -hmm. he, he had a lot of recent success. He got fourth in the 50K during the WSOP. Yeah. Um, he had a couple of big live streams, I think, uh, both wins and losses for the new Hustle Live. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's mm -hmm. like. 
you lost you lost a, a, a person in the scene, right? It's a very small circle of people that can play 200, 400. And he's a really, like, nice, likable guy. Like, it's, yeah. it's not like... I don't know, man. White-collar crime is just weird, right? Because it's like, you, you don't really see white-collar criminals as these evil men that are so detrimental to society. Especially something like this, where uh, it's not like he was, like, taking from the poor and getting rich off their back. You know, some well, people say gambling in, in slots and, and gas stations is taken from the poor. He's yeah, taken from the poor. <laughs> he's offering a service. Like, do you think, do you think <laughs> the casinos here are taken from the poor? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> but, you're going to take a but moral no. stance versus the casino. No, no, no. But, of course, every of, day. No, but of course, like most of the casino's money, we know it comes from like a, a list of whales that, that come in. Yeah, of course. But the, the yeah, I, I guess like I'm not trying to play judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to negative EV games. Mm -hmm. Like, are they predatory? Maybe a little bit, but like at some level, that's also right, right. Yeah, people, it's an entertainment value for some people yeah. as well, right? So it's like even when they sit down with, you know, the great Melissa at a <laughs> table, they are, they, you know, it's negative EV for them. Yeah. yeah, but There's, it's, it's oh, value. They, it's value. They think I am absolutely brain dead. It's good. Because I am. Do you, do you, do you expect to get more of your money or your phone number by the end of the session? Like, or hope. Oh, oh, they try it both. They definitely, actually, phone number, because they will, like, one, <laughs> one guy I remember was like, I'll show you my cards, please. I'll show you my cards. I'm like, don't show me your cards. Like, just play normal. <laughs> What's his name from The Hustler Live? Like, stop it! Just... Stop it! Oh, oh, it, it, oh it was, it was, uh, it was blank, blank check Ben versus uh, Israeli Ron. That's, that's I don't want to see your fucking cards, Ron. Just Stop play, showing just play the awesome. game. Stop that showing me your awesome. cards. But, it's just, but yeah, I mean. I mean, it was, it, <laughs> it was honestly, great. Like, Ron's Ron's such a he is. He is. It's so unfair. Did he invite you to the Laker game? Like, like, no. Bro, you got to be cool over this Israeli Ron. This guy has season tickets to the Lakers. Not far. To be fair, as much as I love sports... I'm not a huge basketball fan at all. Like, it's, I, don't get me wrong. Like, I'd love to sit courtside to a like, to a LeBron game. Yeah, that'd be fucking great. Yeah, yeah. okay. I'll I'll put you in touch. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what's it, it, up? Like, it depends how high. All right, so what do we think? Like, like to to wrap that topic. Okay, so Gall, he was in with the mob or whatever. I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, like we got we had conflicting stories. This is why we had to redo uh, yeah, this yeah. podcast. We initially found a document of. Uh, another man with the same last name who was suing the FBI right. uh, as a former informant on literally the same racket, mm -hmm. right? It was, uh, it had something to do with the crime syndicate out of out Israel of where they were coming to America, to America and, and running these illegal slots. slots. Okay. Uh, out of like Arizona and, and California. <sighs> and this, this other person, Yassin, was that? Havid. Havid. Havid is okay. yeah. So this is a separate person, a separate not related person. at all Correct. to the Gaul situation. But he has the same last name as Gaul. Okay. Uh, Allegedly. It was, the, it was an identical racket. Yeah, but it could be like the Patels. Like they're, they're yeah, like, yeah, it's no, just that's, like, that's they're, they're just uh, everywhere yeah, like yeah. in India, uh, you know? I, I think it yeah. is like a relatively common last name. Yeah. Um, but anyway, like he, I guess this other person had gotten pinched uh, or ratted one way shape or form or another uh -huh. and uh came full circle where like he cut a deal with the fbi and the feds and uh they didn't honor that deal and so now he was suing them to try to get retributions and loss so the snitch got still yeah, rugged yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. snitch got yeah. rugged like all right I mean, what the else government, if, if any the government should start an nft like if anybody's gonna get they rug everybody and, they're rugging and everybody rug the entire united states like that's that's who's gonna pull it off Bro. it's called taxes <laughs> oh, everything! Like I, I was talking, like I was talking about you about the seizures the other day. Like it's nuts. Like, yeah. like you can't even travel with cash now. Oh, so. the the search and seizure thing yeah. has been it's nuts, a, an issue specifically for poker players for a long time. Absurd. All right, so yeah. wow. so okay, so Gaul is indicted. I guess we'll see how that plays out. Obviously, not the first time. Like this, these type of things happen with like yeah. high stakes regs. Like I would expect to see some sort of plea. Uh, just because it seems like that's how white collar crimes usually shake out. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, it seems like he's probably going to do some level of jail time. Unfortunate. Yeah, it is definitely unfortunate. I mean, it's his first first charge. He might get a. Maybe we don't know. That just happens. This is yeah. America. First you think time. he got some money, like, you know, in the desert somewhere? Think Dennis Blatt got some money in the desert? Somewhere? <laughs> or on Are we gonna try to find on a treasure somewhere? <laughs> Yo, maybe maybe I'll be out there with my metal detector. <laughs> wow. I don't know, I'll get one. I don't know for where, but Bitcoin actually is not made of metal. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. Oh, guys. 
<laughs> wow, I just realized. Do you know what is, though? What? Gold? Trezors. <laughs> they have some metal in there. It's true. I was, I was, I was yes. going to say what that. What do you think is the part of a USB plug? Oh, okay, fine. Well, a treasure, a treasure hunt is now going to be called a treasure hunt. Treasure right, hunt. Right, right. Yeah. Jesus. Okay, next right. topic. So moving on to a millionaire who did it. That's a good one. Way. Maybe. Allegedly. Maybe. Allegedly. That was a good one. Uh, when Thank Millions you. just wrapped up. Really fantastic series. We all played this. Uh, yeah. I for two bullets. You for one bullet. They got me for Win one. for how many bullets? Two bullets. Uh, no caches for myself or Christian. Oh, Landon, Landon pulled off the min cash for like 24 ish, 25 ish. Also had a nice run in the uh, six max, got seventh place for like 25K. Yeah. Shout out to my man Johnny Bax, who exterminated the field. How does he? It. He just always. He'll How never. Does he have aces in his Bro, back. he had aces literally every single hand. And then on the bubble the day before, Chewie was saying that he also kept flipping aces every yeah, single time. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like you're hating. <laughs> just the man got aces so like respect the deck chose you my yeah dude. now it's respect when, <laughs> the deck chose you, when you be he's like game, he's like i'm better than johnny Bax. why does he get aces all the time <laughs> no that's all right the game as long as johnny Bax and you uh you've backed as many negative EV players as he has you deserve to get aces when you're making a run and also like back everyone that makes the wsop final table like what? he literally kept the mtt economy afloat it is, it is. All Definitely I'm true. saying was the man kept getting aces. No disrespect. <laughs> He's so tight. Everybody, He's every so time tight. somebody says I He's... got aces a few times, Landon is so salty. He's like, I didn't get aces at all. He hasn't. Well, he hasn't <laughs> That long to go is a quote. Yeah, he gets aces. Like, is it, no, he's no, just used to like. There's the thing. Aces. There's the thing. Like when you're six tabling online, like yeah. you always have a hand somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're alive and you're just sitting there folding and you never get aces right. and you just see someone turn over aces <laughs> like three times, you're like, oh my god. <laughs> you know, like, he just tilted, then he cracked aces with ace king. He's like, oh, this fucking guy aces. <laughs> it was it was ridiculous running ace king to aces twice in the 10k main. Yeah. All right. So the story the is uh, with Tony oh, is he wins the tournament yeah so the final four of the win millions was uh i, I think like some of the best that they could ask for is four well-known players or three well-known players and then someone that That's, we inside the community right know relatively well. right right uh vanessa came up fourth for a little over 500k alex livingston uh livingston mm -hmm. uh who was a main event finalist got third in i believe the 2018 main event yeah uh he got third in this for i think just over six um second place was Isaac Venom, uh, I can't recall. Kempton. What? Kempton. Kempton, yeah. Yeah. Uh, young kid, uh, I know him through like Discord servers and stuff like that, but up and coming grinder. And then Tony S, my man without a smile on his face, pulls the victory for 1.6 million. Long, old time, old timey rank like myself. Uh, I used to <laughs> grind it out with him at the Brigada. He always fucking had aces too. Bro, Jesus Christ. You guys are so angry. <laughs> it's not like, about so being <laughs> Listen, What's there's no on? anger. The Brigada might be the only casino there's... in the world that I'm not a winner at. And it's because. Wow. Subtle flex. Subtle flex. Subtle flex. Oh, oh, uh, oh sorry. It's, it's, because, it's because I was battling nine handed with a bunch of fucking Tonys who literally, they would just limp all the time a bunch of in like 1025, had the aces, and I'm sitting there with the Jack 10 suited thinking I'm all smart. Putting in the five X and then just getting clipped whenever it comes to that. Listen, listen. <laughs> uh, can I can I speak for both of us that there's no anger in our heart. We're just right. saying what it is. Yeah. There's no disrespect. You know people say it that is about soft. you. It is, it is it, not no, anger. No, 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 no. It's right up there with the brokest tweets. Every time that he puts up a hand history and hashtags it, they always have it. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It's like you you want a bluff catch? Go ahead. They always have it. That's true. Yeah, they yeah, literally yeah, always, they have always have it. Nobody makes a living out of bluffing or bluff catching. They always goddamn have it. All right. So so the final four were well known. Yeah. Very well known. Very. Uh, and then Tony wins the tournament. Yeah. And, and then the Cookie Monster blows it up. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden there's like a problem. It's not a problem. <laughs> a sudden, a this problem. is, this is poker what? Twitter in a nutshell, like, right? This, you, this I think guy the problem that no is one knows. Sl a slow news. It's a slow, it's slow. news week. Dang. I mean, there hasn't been any good tea in a while. Right. Yeah. So this is what we're. You know, unfortunately, you guys got to give us more. You're right. And honestly, like, it's also meme culture, right? Like, uh, as best I can tell from the account that posted this initially, he's a bit of a boomer like myself. But how do you uh, know also, he's dressed in a, myself as a boomer? My costume. dad is a boomer. I'm, I'm a millennial. 
Uh, you, what the fuck? You're not a millennial. Yes, he is. Ask the kitty well, corner. That, Ask the kitty okay, corner what you are. Mentally, you're, you're a boomer. You're decrepit. <laughs> you're a decrepit man. Mentally, I'm a zoomer. Can we get to like what the problem was? The there was no problem, but uh, basically the winner photo was turned into a meme where this guy said, "This is why poker is not marketable." Right. And uh, you know, first of all, like this guy just grinded his dick off. For five days. Damn. <laughs> That's God. the sacrifice you make for 1.6 million. Chances. But like grinding your dick yeah, come off. On. <laughs> Would you grind your dick the off for 1.6 million? I mean, you'll grind. Yeah, we can grind. <laughs> Not me and you, but we can grind. Like, like, like a meat grinder. I'm, I mean, at if one, you're open to it for 1.6. I'll tell you what, at one point in my career, I would have considered it. <laughs> yeah, but now you, you, know, you, you only have one casino that you lose to. So. Well, Bitcoin's up. You know, I don't need to be grinding you, my That's dick pretty off. wild. You did. Okay, so, you, okay, so he's not happy. Okay, seemingly unhappy well, or if, not joyful. First of, all, first of all, if you know Tony, this is a smile for him. And secondly, <laughs> he's been through some secondly, shit. Secondly, yeah, it's like, man, this guy's seen some shit. You know what he's seen? Fucking aces a lot. <laughs> he's had the kings and queens himself once in a while. And you know what he fucking finds on the other end? Aces. Because that's how they play in, in New Jersey. You know. You oh, know yeah. Dude, that's why Bergata yeah. shut down. <laughs> Fuck that place. It was because of Corona. <laughs> anyway, okay, so. <laughs> Let's talk about the marketability of Tony and and just like this final table in general. All right. right? Okay. So we had four extremely well known pros. Yeah. And Vanessa. Uh, sorry. No, she's also an extremely well known pro. <laughs> but but with Vanessa in there, it would seem as if this is like a very notable thing. Like right. Like, <laughs> Damn, bro, you're having a hard time today. <laughs> anyway. I'm dying. Yes. Yes. All right. Let me tell you why it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter outside of Vanessa winning. Vanessa is the most marketable of that group by a long shot. Right. And it's mainly because she represents a massive minority in the marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. There's just an absolute lack of female exposure. And she's outspoken too. Right, yeah. Right. Well, she, yeah, she created a platform for herself a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the whole Blazarian thing and then followed <coughs> it up by winning the, the, the uh, Sunday Million. So like, Whatever, there, there's been a perfect storm that makes her incredibly marketable. Yeah. But she would be marketable anyway just out of the fact that she's playing a 10K tournament as a female and has, you know, uh, uh, the credentials to, to win it and, mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, put her face forward. So cool. that is very marketable. The reason why it's not very marketable if Tony or Isaac or uh, Alex wins is because they just represent the norm, the standard, the, the, the much of the same, right? So it's like... Does a good... <clears throat> pro like you know yeah. in the 30s and it's kind of sick because it's like you know 20. isaac's very young yeah. so there's a storyline there obviously <clears throat> and uh alex and tony are very well accomplished in their careers their resumes look good mm -hmm. but the reason why it's all a non-story is because bigger picture outside of the four walls of the poker community there's nothing there right they're just consummate pros yeah who made money and that's just not interesting to the general populace okay so, so then it doesn't fucking matter if this guy smiles or frowns or <clears throat> okay, moves but, the camera. But still, though. Okay, so what is what do we think about the old guard, Daniel Negreanu, Phil Helmuth, Antonio saying, like, well, like, don't we want new people in? Don't we want a new crowd? Like, we need to have a marketable, like, be happy that you just won 1.5 mil. Like, what's up with that? New people aren't reading poker news that people who don't know about poker don't give a shit who like they don't know because that mm -hmm. we're so insulated that i mean you didn't know online poker was a thing i didn't even know online poker existed a few years ago i didn't even know people played poker for a living like people who are outside of poker have completely no idea because it's not on tv it's not on mainstream media anymore there's no, there's no, like everything's behind a paywall or marketed towards people who already play poker. So mm. it's just sort of like, there's no gap bridging there. Yeah, I, I've been saying this for a very long time. I think that poker has a huge marketing problem. And I think large in part, it starts with the lack of media attention both in a local sense and in a global sense, right? So locally, we don't really have mainstream media, so to speak, in the poker world outside of poker news. So what about these characters? Like, you know, WSOP, the, literally it was a travesty when Conrad busted the WSOP main, right? Because it was like people tuned in to watch Conrad. Yeah, but mm -hmm. like you're talking about like, 
person tuned in or like you know, tens of people. Okay. Listen, in. listen, listen, but- listen. I got at least fucking 60 DMs okay, so about like, them watching, all right? So, at least 60 people. So is it, it no, what at I least 60. people. No, 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 listen, <laughs> listen, this is kind of what I'm trying to Your say. Your stance has not changed. Conrad's a character, right? No, no what I'm trying to say too is it, is, it, right. is it a little bit our fault? Because like no. Conrad was super entertaining. Like they put like, it was, it was unfortunate when he busted. Yeah, but we're just trying to squeeze blood from a turnip at this point, right? Like mm. they're just trying to find the marketability mm-hmm. of a game that's relatively slow paced and not very visual. Right, it's not esports where we can follow the action and it's a lot of movement and a We're lot of squeezing things blood. Did you say? Yeah. Did, did you, you say, say squeeze blood, blood from a turtle? Turnip. I thought turnip. you said squeeze blood from go. a tournament. This is a thing. I, oh, so I, thought, it too. It's I thought you said turtle. Look, yeah. look, look, I bought Chin a book of idioms when we were doing the broadcast. I will get you all a copy. <laughs> Thank well. you. Okay. We might need. I'm it. sure a boomer wrote it. Blood from a turnip. <laughs> blood from a turnip. No, I I get that. I'm a boomer too. Look, I'm not a goddamn boomer. I want to put my foot down right now. Listen. This is not going to be an ongoing thing. No, no we, again, again, again. You listen, call same us thing. The We're geriatric millennials. Or whatever. We are. <laughs> We're geriatric. Right. No, it's a thing. Speak That's an actual thing. It's a thing. Speak for yourself, old man. The time is I'm, now. I, I'm six months old. All right, so already. it's our... So it's... Media is not doing a good enough job, or the game is just not marketable, or we are just not doing a good job as it's, individuals. It's all of the above, right? So first and foremost, uh, there's no global marketing to poker whatsoever. There are no actual uh, storylines getting picked up by ESPN, getting picked up by US Today, or any of the national. Right, last media time program. it got picked up is like literally when Possible. Possible cheated, right? right? That was it, <laughs> right? And it was like Allegedly. flash in a pan. It, it lasted for like literally one news cycle, right? Right. And those stories are rare; they they don't come often. So the biggest thing poker has going for it is that nobody hates it, mm. right? So nobody really has a hard stance against poker. That's great. That's a good starting ground. But we need to get to a point like what chess has done, where they're building the next generation and they're leaning into God. all of the, the, the marketing that is available through the internet, right? Yeah. Non-traditional marketing. We're getting into digital marketing spaces now. And they're doing a great job building characters through, what, well, really they're doing it in a homegrown way, right? Like all of these content providers in chess are doing it on their own the way vloggers are doing it in the poker space. Yeah, but... You know, like Brad Owen said, it's always like there's such a high barrier to entry for these vloggers because they can't even like film openly. Whereas like That's chess, true. like these girls are going to the new to New York and, and just like going to the park and like there's a crowd, there's yep. a story. He's she's like playing some 13 year old kid who's like really good and they're talking trash back to each other. It's speed chess, but it's like you go to the casino. And it's like you need clearance. You yeah. need you need all types of things. You have people like, oh, don't don't feel my face. Like, that, I don't want my wife true. to know that I'm here taking all the <laughs> retirement money. Like, it's like, it's like, all right, like, God damn. That part's true, but it, you know, it's, it's lessening a little bit. Uh, I think mm-hmm. the bigger problem that poker su- suffers from is that there isn't uh, objective metrics to qualify skill set, right? Mm-hmm. So in chess, you have to actually know a certain amount about the game and be able to compete at a certain level in order to get to... Uh, to IM or GM, <clears throat> right? And these are objective labels. Like you've accomplished something in your career to reach yeah. IM or GM status, right? Right. In poker, that doesn't exist. Right, because if someone wins a tournament, it's just because they got aces a bunch, right, Landon? Yeah. <laughs> you can't, mean, you, we can quantify how good of a hand aces is. <laughs> that is true. It is a very right, good hand. Right, like we, but we, that's about the it. The only objective data we really have in poker is like the hand rankings and, right. and the actual uh, game itself. But like in chess, you have to know X amount of opens and X amount of or Y amount of defenses, right? And in poker, like it's not that simple. It's not that clean. Like strategy is uh, something that we distill down to a lot of principles and metrics. But you have a lot of freedom within that, right? Right. So the problem, like, what you're saying is like we have someone like Brad Owen clearly like someone that is the biggest name in YouTube mm-hmm. vlogging, but we can't necessarily quantify how good or bad this person is. So if a well, mainstream- Well, what he'll never be is uh, an elite talent within the industry. The community will never allow it. Right, so that's, that's the problem, right? Yes. So, so- You'll never see overlap between people that are given the platform of being the best in the industry and influencer. So let's talk to Melissa a little bit because like you did you did some streaming, right? Yeah. And then you're also, I, I think, a very good pro. Like, what's your, what's your take on this? Um, well, I think, okay, I can also speak to, like, uh, where I was a few years ago as, like, I was just a poker fan. 
And I will say Negreanu was my favorite when I knew nothing about poker because he table talks so much and he's a character and he's entertaining and it's lively whenever he's at the table, there is some sort of banter. Mm -hmm. So that's something that the viewer can keep up with. I know personally from streaming, I had a really hard time learning poker and also talking about it and having all these millions of, not millions, but you know, hyper hyperbolic tens. million, tens of people uh, t telling there me, you go. we gotta keep it real, telling me they're what I should be doing or what I'm doing wrong, and it 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 muddles the process of learning by a lot. So it, I think even just playing, any streamer will tell you it's way harder to play your best on stream because you're also distracted, and uh, I think people are either sectioned into they're a player or they're a streamer slash vlogger content creator. Yeah, it's I can never both. I can sort of attest to this as I've streamed pretty infrequently, but sometimes like on Twitch. And I know when I stream, my perspective is not to entertain the chat. I'm just going to stream gameplay. People want to talk, like I'll give a response, but I'm never really trying to respond very much to the chat when it comes to a strategic standpoint. Yeah, but there's I, a I've difference. Some of your in streams. I think that there's a lot to glean from uh, being able to see your whole cards and the decisions that you take. But as far as like entertainment value goes, it's uh, very low. It's pretty low. Yeah, it's very it's low. I'm sorry, right, but he's not a content creator. He's not. He's not a streamer. Like we're talking no, about. But we're talking about people that are streamers. I understand. You know, I kind of want to backtrack for a second. Like I think the reason why chess is so much more marketable as opposed to poker is the because of the gambling lens. Like, people look at poker through, like, a gambling lens where people look at chess as straight strategy. That's true. Where stra mm -hmm. there's a lot of... I think, I think that's true. Yeah, but I, I think, it's, 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 I think as time true. goes on, people are starting to look at poker in a more chess-like lens. Well, to disqualify that a little bit, uh, the bigger market than both of those put together is daily fantasy. That's pure gambling. I mean, not pure gambling. There's obviously strategy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but, you're, but, you're, but it's tied with sports, and sports is very, sure. very easily marketable. Sounds yeah. like a so great it's market. Like, it's like, like hey, bet, <laughs> bet on your favorite player. Like, it's yeah. like, you know, no, no, so. I, I agree. It, it is because of the sports tie, but I guess my point is is that uh, people aren't as sensitive to the gambling, the gambling aspect, aspect yeah. as maybe we might like to imply. I, I think there's something there. I don't know what it is. but Poker like. has a lot of problems uh, as far as marketing goes. But I think a lot of it just stems from nobody really capitalizing on an opportunity in the market. Like when Full Tilt was built, it was a collection of five or six pros that saw an opening in the space to make a ton of fucking money by offering a service that really nobody was rivaling outside of uh, stars. And party. And party, yeah. yeah. What y'all need? We're so, here. Well, I, I think that like, I think we're on the precipice of this, right? Or at least to some degree it's beginning. Uh, that same hole in the market exists right now for media in the poker industry. The mm -hmm. problem is we're less versed in it than we are in like, like it would be easier for any poker player to start a poker site than yeah. it would be to start a media group. Cause there's, there's, uh, there's someone's done it before. I'm yeah. Like, and yeah. also marketing is a big aspect of being a media group. Right. Correct. And we suck yeah. at marketing, but really like, uh, if you get a collection of influencers, which I think the vloggers are starting to do this and starting to understand because they collab so much together. Mm -hmm. But if you can get a collection of people with platforms who dedicate themselves to becoming the sole media source or the number one media source of a specific industry, there's a lot of meat on that bone, right? Yeah. It's going to be a rough start. It's not going to be like opening a poker site where you just have instantaneous consumer base yeah. and you just make money hand over fist. It's going to be the opposite, right? It's going to be a slow burn. Long build. And yeah, and in some regards, like it's kind of what we're trying to do here, uh, but maybe not that focused on, on the media aspect. Of it. But, uh, you know, people in this community are desperate for content. People outside of this community are desperate to advertise to such a solely focused uh, target audience, right? Mm -hmm. You know what you're getting. You're getting males between the age of 20 and 40 with expendable income that are interested in gaming, gambling, sports, etc. right? Yeah. Like it's a very, very targeted market. The problem is, is nobody knows how to really tap it yet. And I think that once somebody makes the decision that there's enough money to be made there to dedicate all their time and resources to it, we might see that poker media LLC just pop up out of nowhere. I think we'll also see something once America opens up to the rest of the world in terms of online. Yeah. yeah. I think it's I mean, just, you, you're just gonna have a TV show or you're gonna have these type of things that are going to facilitate these projects. It just depends where it lands, right? The dollars are gonna speak. 
When that yeah. happens, the dollars Netflix, will come. We want a Netflix show. What, I want to see what's a Netflix. It about? It, well, you know a, what? There's a. It's uh, so there's so much drama and cr- craziness. I think that like so Real things. Housewives, but make there, it poker there's players. There's a no. Negranu, oh, man. Uh, documentary <laughs> on Netflix, and there was a produced show on ESPN called Tilt. Way back in the day, like 2006. I owned the DVDs. Yeah, Honestly, I though, like, <laughs> well, like, I swear I did. It was a huge flop. Two but, months, like, two months, two million. Was it was the same guys that uh, made Robert. Two months, two million yeah. was also a big flop, but like within the community, it's it's. Uh, it was a hit. It's, it's a cult it's, classic. It's, yeah, it's a very much a cult classic. Put it We're on cult. What? Put it on Netflix. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's I mean, free. That, on the that makes sense. Why? We are kind of. Cool. I mean, maybe Netflix is a bigger platform than YouTube. In some regard, right? Because well, it's so streamlined. If you think about like the hit shows on Netflix, do you see the amount of tweets that these shows that everybody's watching, even Love Is Blind, like Euphoria, like they're getting, like everyone's talking about it. Inventing Anna. Do we think? Okay, I, I want to talk about. So, Paul. so <laughs> do we think that we have oh. some sort of problem based on how people find content now? Because if you're not in poker at all, like you're just never going to see anything poker related. Or even like by two degrees, because the YouTube algorithm, which is the second biggest search engine in the world, will never show it to you. Yeah, yeah. Right? I think that that's a big issue. Is so that, how do like, we get discovered? For, how do we get nothing. discovered? Sorry, not for nothing. You're not really clicking the button if like you don't want to watch poker. Like, no, I'll, but there's but, a lot of people who have a loose interest in poker yeah. that aren't searching for it. Like I have a loose interest in cars, but I'm never ever searching for a rebuild. But if it were to pop up, I'm all for it. Like I would sucked in. I used to watch like all of those shows on Discovery Channel. Because it was lazy viewing. I could see that. And it would just pop up. Yeah. But I would also, never ever go out of my way. How many people, to watch it. personally for me, I didn't know poker until it was on ESPN, right? But people are not watching TV anymore. YouTube is the new TV, right? That's why I said it matters so, where it lands, right? Like when all, these new mar- or when all these new uh, um, industries come in, assuming that like online gets legalized here coast to coast. Where is all this content going to land? Because if it ends up behind a paywall like poker go, right, it doesn't you, matter. you just keep facilitating it's the gone. same the same cyclical uh, hamster in the rat wheel ty- or hamster mm-hmm. in the wheel type of uh, mentality where it's like you're only getting the diehards, right? You just right. never, and that's the big problem. The Venn diagram of all the markets that overlap with poker is very, very vast. That's a right. big part of why we started this show, right? We have an interest in fitness and nutrition. The whole community does. We have an interest in gambling and daily fantasy and sports betting. The Astrology whole does. and astrology horoscope manifestation we're gonna bring the women in with the astrology apparently because that's the only females that go on dating apps in my experience manifesting uh, you are manifesting we, those. We, we have an interest in nfts and crypto and all these things but we haven't found a way to tie these markets together yet so they right. all rest separately uh orbiting poker rather than being a true venn diagram where we see some spillover from each and every one of them yeah yeah that's definitely that's definitely fair all right. I mean, but it's not our problem to fix. No, it is. We'll, I mean, fix it. Somebody, we'll fix it. It's somebody's well, problem. It's somebody's to fix. problem. It's not to ours. Fix who wants to make money? It's not. That's well, true. shit. It's gonna be expensive. You're not gonna. Uh, well, God, I mean, okay, fine. Episode I've 25, we'll have the answer. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, episode 25 will be sponsored by Manscape, obviously. No. Manscape. Where did Manscaped you get this one from? This is literally the first. The lawnmower. 4.0. Point oh. <laughs> literally Jesus. the first no to a sponsorship I've said in three years has been this one. No. Did you cut? Did you? Have an accident? What? An accident? Did I have an what? accident? No, I did not. Have an I just didn't like the one that they did with another platform. Oh. Um, speak, speaking of marketable content, we did have something happen in the in the Twitter sphere or the community, I guess, uh, about a week ago. We saw Garrett get slow rolled uh, on Hustler Live by Dylan Gang, which, yeah. by the way. With how this all shook out, like this is up there with things that you can't script in this in the sense of how perfect it is, like the moneymaker winning the World Series, like, a guy with the last name of moneymaker winning two million dollars playing a game, right? So th- this got Dylan Gang, like what a fucking villainous name! Yeah. This is so <laughs> perfect, right? It is. It is a villainous name, and it's like Gary is the 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 adorned son of live no limit hold'em high stakes, such like a like like. Garrett Adelstein. Like yeah, that, that person is just like usually He's like, like chiseled from marble and just yeah. like never makes a wrong decision. Everybody lo- like we just want to rally behind him. And what ends up happening? Dylan takes it upon himself to give him the fuck you slow roll. Yeah. 
in kind of like, you know, the lamest fashion, but let's take a look at the clip. <laughs> I'm so glad you ended with lamest fashion. fashion. So 131,000. I'm so glad you ended with 55,000 for Garrett to call. Oh god, it's so frustrating. Fuck. Oh, it's so frustrating. Again, Dylan's never going to have pocket queens here. He overlimped. Go back to preflop. He overlimped JR's limp, which started this hand. So what is he representing? Maybe threes, maybe pocket fours. Would he ever overlimp a hand like queen three suited? And Garrett's gonna call. Good call. Whoa. Oh. Just kidding. Oh. 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 Wow. So we see Garrett, the consummate professional, just takes it in stride. Uh, Dylan with a very, very weak, just kidding there at the end. But man, like what a setup. Like we look at these two and Dylan looks like fucking Bane from <laughs> Batman. Like he's got the mask, he's got this ripped V-neck t-shirt on, just like everything about him is just like screaming villain. And you know, Garrett is like the, the guy that we want to champion for. So it's so easy to rally behind him and just be like, oh no, like, Fuck this guy! Like he's coming after our man's. Like we gotta, we gotta support yeah, yeah. him. Everything. It's great, right? Like these narratives get built, and I think that's why we see such success with the hustler stream, with even live at the bike in the past. And w I'll be curious to see like how it moves mm -hmm. forward now that they're uh, a part of uh, a television network. But they do a great job of character development, right? Yeah, I, I I completely agreed with like even the the, the take that Billy had. Um, but I do want to bring in uh, Brian here at least to you know get you in the mix here uh <laughs> what do you think about slow rolling as a whole but also slow rolling the best player in the game as like a tax to that person uh i don't mind the slow i think it's good for the audience right i mean like for the player it sucks obviously and but like if you're trying to build something and you're trying to get people interested in it these kind of things are, are really good for the game, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that's what Berkey's saying, right? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think like when it's natural like this, you know, there was a little bit of history between the two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I talked to Dylan about it like a week ago, and he's like, I didn't mean to come off like as the bad guy here. It's like, hey, buddy, man, you picked the wrong character if you didn't want to come off as the bad <laughs> right. guy. Like, you are auto bad guy yeah. here. And, but that's like, good. Just think... embrace, yeah, just embrace it. I was like, you know, like the only thing you should be ashamed of is is the actual attempt. It was weak. Yeah, the weak. The, like, you was really got to hit him. With I don't the, think he thought about it. Was it. Like, I, think he, I, think, I think he like saw an opportunity. He was like, oh, I can slow roll him here. And didn't like he didn't have it planned out right, or anything right, like that. Right. So he's just like, oh, I'm going to slow roll him here. And he's just like, just kidding. And then that was it. <laughs> yeah. And it's <laughs> like, honestly, like, right. Honestly, because like, really, there's no way he planned that out. No, right? it, really it couldn't have been that bad. If he scenario it to do it because like Garrett is having a pure funeral for his hand. Like, yeah. I've been <laughs> in that spot where it's like, oh, so frustrating. Man. Like how am I fucking getting raised here yeah. when I have a hand that like should just, and you're just like, whatever, man, take the fucking money. And like, you think that you're gifting these chips away right. and then you hear, the dream work. Right, you're, you're good. Going, yeah. You're good. <laughs> you're good. You're like, and it's just like him proudly tabling the hand. Oh, he was so, so happy. Uh, I mean, at that point, punchline. Like, just punchline. You don't have to wait any longer. Like, the slow roll doesn't need to cascade yeah. on and, like, really make yeah. him feel. He's going to feel the pain the second that you hit him with the, oh, my bad. I misread my hand. You know? <laughs> or yeah. you could have just held it. He could have literally just he held his hand like, oh, longer. fuck. Uh, oh, until the oh. pot was like, <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> like, oh, fuck, man. But he just oh. starts having his own. Really? Yeah, just like starts flipping the cards and shit. It's like, 
Uh, yeah, just I mean, at, at yeah. this point, like he, he got it. He Gary would have known, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. it would have been. It well, that's been... the thing is you don't you you don't really want to. I've been slow rolled a couple times by like some giga whales in uh, <laughs> like Ivy's room, and they're always a they're really proud of themselves when they do it, which that is a tax that like you just have to pay. That's as, what I'm saying. As the winning yeah. player, but B. They're always so needly in the way that they do it. Like it's never like good call, uh, just kidding type of thing. It's they just hold their hand and shake their head, and then when you table it, they look at your hand and they go, "Oh, just top pair? <laughs> oh, you only have top pair? <laughs> I can beat that." And they spread like the nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but I do, I still yeah. think that Garrett. Getting slow rolled is a tax for Garrett. He's just the best player in. I don't the think game. he would ever say otherwise. Yeah, right. he's not upset about this, right? He got his vindication Hell, later. I mean, well, whatever. He I mean, no, he like, like there's like, like, there's, like, come on. I I read I read his tweet like, oh, there's no beef. There's, a... come on, dog. I mean, like, he wants like, to get stop him. it, like, bro. What he's not like, saying is he wants to get. Yeah, him. like like it's became... on. Stop lying, bro. No, he's not lying. He's just admitting. Some he's of just the the, he's just like the Garrett Adelstein. That's why he's the good guy. That's why he's the good guy. That's why he's the baby face. Let's just say Garrett. He does come out like that. He doesn't just. Go yeah, nuts. That's and exactly. Start, that's start, exactly like, how rage tweeting. Faces are I, I would I like. Look, I have mad respect for Garrett, but I, I liked when Phil Goffon goes, "I'm gonna play." Like, like when he says, "Like I'm ready to play." Like, just all he, all Garrett had to say is, "It's on." Period. Tweet. Like, <laughs> honestly, like, that would have. I would have been like, been "Oh awesome. yes, let's, let's go." Oh, yeah, and that's what he is yeah. for sure. But like, as Garrett, you kind of like give Dylan a little bit of power when you do that. But yeah, yeah the he already did that. He already did that the week uh, before when he edited on just to cover Garrett. I mean, cover no, Dylan. No, that was yeah, but he didn't give Dylan any power there. He basically spit in his face. No, 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 no. I'm That's sorry. what brought I'm up. Sorry. The I'm, whole sorry. Thing. I'm not saying that he gave him any yeah. power. I was saying that it was it's on. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on. Yeah, but like, yeah. But they knew it was on. Of course, the public right, right, right. needs to know it's on. Right, like, and this is come full circle. This is why poker media is necessary. Right. right. Literally, <laughs> I promise you this: if if there was some way. To collectively get a lot of poker under the same roof, like let's call it high rollers, WSOP, and uh, you know mid to high stakes cash games. Like somehow it's all controlled by the same entity, right? Let's call it just like Poker LLC. And we sold that to Vince McMahon. I promise you, it would be a billion dollar industry within a decade. I promise you. I don't then, think I'd argue let's with go. You. What are we doing? I don't think I'd like, argue with you there. Yeah, he uh, would just develop it in a very templated way similar yeah. to the wwe where he would just like pluck out uh x amount of of players who were talented and willing to play the role and yeah. he would just be like you're a heel you're a, a baby face this is what's going to happen we're going to pit you guys against each other the only control i don't have that i had in the wwe is the outcome but like the game is so high in variance that will that get all the outcomes it. anyway. You know, so it'll just be fun. And then he'll sprinkle in some fly chicks in there. Like, yeah, you know who Vince of, like, McMahon is. Determined interviews. What? You know who Vince McMahon is in this situation, right? Don't his, say Tom. His name is fucking Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say Tom. I thought he was going to say Carrie Kent. Uh, like, nah, Carrie, it's fucking Tom. Carrie kind of, but like he's just too interested in playing, I think, and creating good events for him. So we think yeah. slow rolls are good. Do we, we generally just think slow rolls are good for the audience. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Why don't we take a look at this clip where we get to witness highlights of maybe five of the best slow rolls, okay. and we can determine thereafter if it's good. All right, let me see. Did you have like a five or some, something goofy? Like, I don't know. But you know what? I like to sleep at night. See, this is one way that I do it. Yeah. Just pay oh, and see it. You win. Yes! Oh, wow. oh here's, here's the Kings slow roll. The reverse slow oh, roll. Here it is! Kings and eight. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Got him! I I you did that to me. Christian Soto. Oh my god, is he gonna really. Oh lord. Oh no. Fail fish? Oh my lord. Oh no. Not like this. Oh my god, he's slow rolling Sam! Oh my lord, what in the world is going on? Oh my god, this, please, a six. Oh, I mean, I'm not, I don't usually root for players, but, I mean, maybe he's truly thinking about this? I have never called for any kind of cards in any situation, but come on, six for justice. That's kind of a brutal slow roll there. Oh, six on the river. Ship it to mama. Instead of like, why did you take me? Mullen. He has to count. Uh-oh. Wow. So, so you guys give him a minute here. He's got a tough decision. All right, I call. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Do you want cash, Mikey? I might just quit. I don't well, like people to slow roll. It's not funny to me. If I, if I thought you would even be You do anything to me, you can call me an M or son. No, you're no, you, slow on me, I'll punch like you in the mouth. All right. You, you think I'm joking? I'm not. I That's know great television. Okay. Do it. Pop him. Pop him. In a hand against Steven Friedlander, <laughs> who moves all in. You might as well just get him on. Hey, don't push around my man, Jack Yuri. Jack going to make the call. Yeah, puts himself at risk. Friedlander shows a full house. This might be it for Jack Yuri. You're in trouble. Show us. He's in trouble right now. Show us. Good And he hits a oh, very yeah. costly queen on the river because he now thinks he has trip queens. You have re reload chips ready? Emmett's all in. 10, that's it? Wait, what do you say? Reload Three. chips. I'm gonna leave it up to the dealer, is that okay, Randall? If I let her decide to call her fold. <laughs> do you play poker at all? Um, not really, not much. Okay, you know the hand rankings though, right? Yes. So what is this hand? Oh, What's it oh, called? Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Should I say it? Yeah, say it out loud. Full house. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I knew it. I looked at the camera and I said huh. slow roll. I gotta tell you, man, Deeb is a fucking legend. Deeb is definitely the villain. <laughs> he really is. He's the villain. <laughs> so uh, I remember watching the Madison one, like when it happened, and I was just like, that is fucking cold blooded. But I hadn't seen the Randall Emmett one until just now, and the addition of the dealer. Is just genius. <laughs> it is genius. Like that's very well thought out. Like he, so good. You know the hand rankings, right? Can you tell me what that is? A, a full house pack. Yeah, I successfully got the dealer to slow roll rant. Right. Yeah. He was right. the dealer so was great. in on it. The yeah. dealer was in on it. I mean, Sean's definitely the villain there. Okay, so slow rolls are good for shows. They're definitely good for TV shows. Yes, that part is for sure true. Um, I don't think there's something that could be contrived. Like people shouldn't aspire to necessarily slow roll. I think it's a certain type of character that knows the moment well, knows how to deliver it. You know, it's kind of like delivering a joke, right? You gotta right. be able to read the room. You gotta know when to have the punchline come through. You gotta, you gotta have like uh, a good ability to story tell, whatever. It's, it's really the same thing. It's timing. It's yeah, timing it's is timing. very critical. Um, That's why yeah. Sean's the fucking hero though. He ain't the villain. No, he you're is a the villain. hero. He is delivering us full-time entertainment at all yeah, times. Uh, literal no. sense of the yeah. word. Like, sure, yeah. he's, yeah. he's our It's just the dynamic, like right. the hero. Oh, right, it's like, how Sean, you're my reacts, hero. Yeah, how the table reacts. <laughs> you know whether you did it right or not. If they're all just like, oh, uh, like that. But then if they all just bust out laughing, you're like, yeah, that was a good timing. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah, except for the person who gets slower. Well, <laughs> exactly. well they're going to be pissed no matter they what. They have to be in they, pain for it to be truly good. Right, I mean... Yeah. It, I mean, if they're happy about it, then I don't. You right, they're too problem, much. Right. They're too rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Daniel Lebron was like, "Oh, no, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, you're rich. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he didn't care. He's, like, he's oh, just he's... like, oh, that's great. <laughs> Eight hundred dollar pot. So what? <laughs> yeah, like okay, guy. Okay, like, yeah, it's gotta hurt. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not I, uh, the reason why there's like that yeah, that right. pause there is yeah. because I know that it's going to happen to me at one point. And it's only going to matter if it hurts. That's true. Like that's it true. doesn't. It doesn't hurt if it doesn't matter. But if I it got, matters, is that's when it's important. And I, I know it to stay with. I hope you get than guy just has aces. I'm putting <laughs> a bounty. I'm putting a bounty. I've been nit rolled, and people have had aces. <laughs> I'd rather. I'd rather get like nit rolled or slow rolled than nit rolled nit any day of the week. Very tilting. Nit roll. Yeah. Getting nit rolled is nit the worst. There's, no, there's no intention behind it. It's not on no, purpose. No, nit roll is only tilting because like we understand like. God damn, you had a snap call. Like, knit, right? knit rolling That's is why it's tilting me. Highly tilting. This bro. man doesn't quite understand yet. And like, mm. he'll make some thin play and I'll be like, bro, that's, that's just not going to work here. And he'll be like, he tanked with a queen. And like, <laughs> he was yeah, never Yeah, but like, he was never fucking folding, man. Yeah, he, just, he was never folding. He just felt like putting you through the ringer while I give a funeral for his hand. Yeah, the hand folded. funerals are so real life. They're so real. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I, so I many. think this is Landon's role. He's just going to play online, yeah. like every every, every, session. Session, every <laughs> yeah. session. But then just like chime in with these like one one sentence, like yeah. just like <laughs> funerals are bad. <laughs> so pain, bro. So like, pain. What? Yeah, those definitely happen. <laughs> yeah. They do. It's painful. Uh, all right, that's that's largely going to bring us to the end of the show. I do want to close on an experience that I had the other day that was a relatively fun one. Uh, Andre took myself, my nephew, and uh, his good friend, T.O.D. Uh, what's his real name? It's just Todd. His real name's Joanne. 
Yeah, it's Johan. I can't call him Todd when his real name is Johan. No, it's fine. Everybody calls him Todd. Okay, fine. We'll call him Todd. Uh, big in the gaming world, uh, esports guy himself, uh, a lot bigger of a, a platform than what we have. But, uh, you know, he just wanted to meet poker players. And I think I highly disappointed him, at least until this story came up. So Andre took us to some Japanese fusion place, which, uh, you know, for anybody who knows me relatively well, my palate is about as boring as a five-year-old's. Meat and potatoes across the board here for me. But the good news is uh, this place had ribeye. So I'm fine. And uh, the bad news for me is they had chopsticks, which these <laughs> fat meat paws don't. <laughs> wow. Literally, we need a segment where we just bring you food with chopsticks and we just film. You have no idea how. <laughs> That'll be incredible. I was like using them as a shovel at one point. Okay. Uh, let, I think. Let me just I mean, come on now. Uncultured, uncultured. This is the bowl. Okay, we're going to take some chopsticks out. And he's literally... <laughs> <laughs> it's a shovel. Great horse in it. You know how hard it is to eat rice with chopsticks? It's the most uncultured filth I've ever seen. <laughs> so, obviously, uh, this spurns Andre to tell me I'm uncultured. And I let him know that I've eaten at a Michelin star restaurant before. <laughs> And he goes, what did you get? And I was like, well, I have a story to tell you. So I was in San Diego visiting Dan O'Brien when he lived there. And he took us to this Michelin star uh, brunch spot like on the boardwalk. And it was like a seafood uh, place, uh, which to me is a little weird for brunch. You know, I'm a pancakes kind of guy when we're talking about brunch. But okay, fine. I but get San it. Diego is a, is a fishing town. Yeah, we're by the yeah. ocean. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking through the menu and, you know, I'm not really looking for shellfish at 11 a.m. And I see uh, fish and chips. And it's like, okay, like impossible for me not to like this. I enjoy white fish. And uh, this is a very basic meal, very meat and potato kind of guy, you know. So I was like, I'll take the fish and chips. He's like, Excellent choice. It's, uh, it's one of our most popular dishes. I was like, can't wait. Looking forward to it. So she comes, she serves everybody, the uh, everybody their food. They're all having like... Oysters Rockefeller and some fancy shit that I don't want anything to do with. You know, boogers in a, in a clam <laughs> shell. So I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> Andre's right. <laughs> over yeah. This. And uh, don't she, bring him she to sets down my fish and chips. And I go, uh, excuse me, could uh, I have some ketchup? And I'm already prepared for some bad news. You know, you as a fellow Yinzer, Lamana, you understand where I'm coming from here. Uh, you go to these nice restaurants and you get fucking fancy ketchup. Yeah. Are you just bringing the whole only city one. of Pittsburgh into your palate? Uh, when it comes to ketchup. When it comes yeah. to ketchup. Okay, what is, yeah. only what one is the ketchup, food of Pittsburgh? And that's Pittsburgh. Heinz ketchup. What is the ketchup? What? What's the food of Pittsburgh? Ketchup it's a very eclectic area. So we actually have like sex in our city where there's like a uh, Greek town. There's uh, an Italian town. Not Italian town. Little right? Italy. Little yeah. Italy. So this Bloomfield. is like every city. Yeah. yeah. So it's very <laughs> ethnic. Right. There's nothing unique about that. <laughs> well, no, but like New York has like pizza. Like that's... Wait, like New yeah. York pizza, like that's yeah. famous. I mean, yeah, they have, has, slices, they have pierogies. Yeah, we have pierogies. Once again, they we have, have, we have they have ketchup and, we got and strictly brothers. ketchup. They have ketchup. Permanis, but yeah, Heinz Fifty Seven, Heinz Factory is built and made in Pittsburgh. So okay. like that's the that's the 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 thing we hang our hat on, I guess. That and Andy Warhol. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that and Wordle. <laughs> uh, so you know, fancy ketchup sucks. We can all agree on that. Yeah. Uh, don't know what's different about it, but it definitely sucks. Uh, but you know, it's still ketchup and I grew up on ketchup when everything fried so I can live with it. So if I'm expecting her to say, sure, no problem. And then bring me some like weird ceramic dish with like some fancy fucking ketchup in it mm -hmm. that I'm barely going to use, but it's better than nothing. Instead, she has the gall <laughs> oh, to hit me. <laughs> that, is, that is ironic. She has the that gall was that was <laughs> to hit me with, uh, I'm sorry, the chef doesn't like it <laughs> to use ketchup on these dishes. So instead, he's prepared for you this dipping sauce. And I'm like... There's no ketchup in the entire building, I right? Mean, did you ever None. consider the None. chef might have a better palate than you, though? Maybe you should wow. try it's it. It's my palate! <laughs> well... But it's not good. I don't <laughs> care. That's subjective. Your palate oh, has to suck. You Your eat scrambled sucks. eggs. You don't every eat day. anything but three things. Scrambled Listen, eggs I'm, and I agree with all you guys on this, but except for this one, this one thing. What? Yeah. The yeah. Heinz part. I Listen, can we get, yeah. the, can we get the, the the Brian barbecue stuff going already? Like, Look, 
This is on Friday, Look, right? I'm there's hungry. a twist to this story, okay? This is not over. <laughs> Uh, this war has only just begun as far as I'm concerned, okay? <laughs> I give her the death stare, like, look, lady, I'm paying you 30 fucking dollars for a goddamn fried fish and french fries. That's not a lot. That is a lot. Uh, what type of Michelin restaurant is yeah, this? Yeah, what the about? hell? At least Are you sure two. this was a Michelin restaurant? It was probably like, yeah, it was, was probably like 75 shady shit. What are you guys talking about? I got a little bucks? tiny piece of fried fish and french fries. I think they had a, they had a gold yes, star appetizer. sticker. That's supposed there to cost no. at least $45. No, it's not. I don't know where you eat. This ain't Michigan. <laughs> you guys are out of your mind. But go anyway, ahead. Go ahead. We're all like, entitled to our opinions I here. I am not going to consume this fucking dipping sauce you're giving me that is literally like just mayo and ketchup mixed together. I want to know where the other <laughs> half of this dipping sauce is, the ketchup itself. And she's like, uh, the chef does not keep ketchup in this restaurant. I'm just like, okay, all right, this isn't over. I'm not eating this dry fish the way you tell me to eat it. So she walks away and I'm looking around and I'm like very upset. And for the first time maybe in the history of knowing Dan and my unreasonable antics, he actually is like, you, you should have ketchup with this. <laughs> it's it's fish and french fries. Now. You should have tartar like, sauce. If you go to Long John's, tartar sauce. You gonna dip fries in tartar sauce? Yeah. No. That's yeah. Disgusting. No, it's tart. What do you mean? Who are That's we to decide what no. is no, and is no, not? No, no, very no. normal. Tartar it's sauce. It's not normal. It's if you're having fish and chips, you it's just dip normal. all of no, your You're all just tartar. being no. argumentative. Yes. You dip French fries yes. in fucking ketchup. Heinz 57. No, right. That's not a question. The standard. I dip them in mayo. It's the standard, <laughs> yes. Okay. But, but tartar sauce, no. they do it in all the Gordon Ramsay uh, burger places yeah. with the fr- they have the tartar sauce too. All yeah. the Gordon Ramsay places bring you some his like yeah, as no, Bergie say some bullshit all the ketchup. All cultured places yeah. have all these options. And they'll also have ketchup. Fake yes, ketchup. You I order a burger at Gordon Ramsay, they will give me ketchup. They will not burger. give you Heinz 57. You're right. I will promise you that. They you give you correct. their spicy ketchup. Yes, yeah, Matt. Disgusting. Matt, this is what makes you a boomer. You're not subject to change. No. No, no. There That's are true. industry standards that are standards for a reason, and Heinz 57 is the absolute best ketchup in the world. Fight me. <laughs> we are. And you're, all right, so uh, what happens? So then what happens? So I say, this is an oak. And I look around and realize we're on the boardwalk. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go on a little hunt. So I get up out of my chair and excuse myself as if I'm going to the bathroom. And instead, I go next door to a fast food place where they have all the fucking Heinz 57 that I could ever consume. <laughs> and I pump myself out a couple bowls of this shit. Wow. Bring Hold it on. back to the table. Bowls. So disrespectful. You took fucking containers? Don't worry what I took. I had enough ketchup to get me through the winter. <laughs> <laughs> all right? You want that with containers? <laughs> these are dark times. I don't think he had packets, right? No, he had like... Yeah, I these thought he had These are dark packets. times, and I will not be denied. So I came back with my bowl of ketchup, <laughs> and I ate that fish and french fries. Three parts ketchup to every bite fish. <laughs> And I enjoyed it like it was my last fucking supper. Oh, listen, Yo, last listen, night listen. I, can't, I have to I have to say I would this. like to, I w- on behalf of the Only Friends podcast, I would like to personally and for my friends here apologize to this restaurant uh, for doing this. In <laughs> and you, I wanna, you should act. not allow I'm that. Back. Literally, I'm going to apologize to Keynes as well because last night I walked into the fucking kitchen and Berkey was eating a box of Keynes chicken fingers and literally. Scooping so much Three ketchup. parts ketchup, <laughs> one part meat. Like, what don't you understand? Ketchup, is, in my opinion, <laughs> is, uh, is a tool to mask the flavor exactly. of shitty no. food. That's Listen. why. No, no, no. That's this is a fact. This if, is if why someone you, makes shitty eggs. If you go, if you go to like some of the top steakhouses, they don't give you steak sauce. No shit. Right? That's because way different. It's, no, it's the same thing. It's I the would same never put ketchup concept. On steak. What do you? What? But it's the I would sa- never put ketchup. Yeah, on but steak. you would put steak sauce. No, I wouldn't. All right, because well, you're going to high end. That's a personal flaw. Because it's a piece of meat and no. it has a. No, what, no. You, oh, so you're gonna go to Outback or? Listen, you're Apple you're you're you can't. And you're gonna say you're but you're part of your you're part of that. How low? No, no, but how low of a steak you have to have to put ketchup? on? You know what I think? No, where? Where would you go? Would you say the same about about a steak sauce? No, you'd be like, oh, that never normal. How bad of you? I would never put If Bobby sauce. Flay makes you a steak, you ain't going to be like, oh, Bobby, let me get some steak sauce. If Applebee's makes me a steak, I'm not going to put steak sauce. All right, sauce but he went it. to a Michelin you star should. place. It's and- still fried fucking fish, man. <laughs> <laughs> They you can get fancy it. Uh, it up all they want. It's still better than That's like me saying, that's like me saying, fry. it's still cow meat, man. Like, <laughs> what? No, no, no not it's the not the same. same. It's not the same uh, thing. You You're talking about better than fried food. God, I'm you so might not happy. Like fish, I'm so, the, the people needed this, man. 
This is the true Matt Burton. I needed to get this off my chest and let you guys all understand that I'm the one who understands the way to consume. I heard you're going back to your. Listen, listen, listen. I I really wish I took a video of him scooping his ketchup last night. The way that rice is a conduit for butter is the same way that fried food is is a conduit for ketchup. (laughs) I mean, yeah, for sure. I can't. Period. All right, listen, Period. I heard you going back to wherever you I'm came from. I'm going back to Pittsburgh. Yes, this week. thank God. I'm getting <laughs> all the goddamn ketchup that's left in that city. I might even tour the Heinz factory while I'm there. I don't know yet. You might oh even work for Heinz factory after the end of it. I think you might secretly just work for them. I love Yeah, what's up? Heinz. Now what's we're talking about I will approve of a sponsored yeah. Heinz. Yeah. Fine. Now we're talking. <laughs> Steeler <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> Let's start restaurant only, around the world. Only Friends podcast. Yo, people Same associated thing. with Heinz do good. I heard it was, wasn't John Kerry like married to the Heinz lady? Yes, I, Teresa. Oh, yeah. Teresa Heinz. Damn. <laughs> There's a lot of money in that Heinz in that Heinz bloodline, man. All right, then bring it over here. Yeah, like, what, what are you saying. doing? Like, so I'm headed back to Pittsburgh. I'm going back for a special event for uh, BetMGM. I'm going to be streaming from there from Wednesday the 23rd until Sunday the 27th. Uh, we're going to be doing giveaways probably on the hour, every hour. Actually, Conrad, I might need you to mod for me if uh, if you're free. How much money are you paying? I'll pay you a little little, little something something. Don't worry. I I'll might pay, you, pay you in ketchup. <laughs> but but we're, gi- we're giving away like uh, infinite phase tickets to try to satellite into the main event. And I'm going to need you to just, you know, splash the pots, give them away, do, do your thing. You I know? like doing that, actually. Yeah, I thought you might want to get it. It's kind of fun. Um, so yeah, we're going to be giving away a lot of phase tickets. Uh, there's a 1K heads up tournament capped at 32 people where they're adding $10,000 to first place. This is insane. Also, there's just like 10 dead, 10 yeah. dead entries. Uh, yeah. More because they're literally like first place. It's only a 32K prize pool. So first place is on naturally is like maybe 11K. Right. So they're Darren, doubling first place. Yeah. Darren is going to win all three of them. No matter what state it is in, he will find a way <laughs> to win all three of them. So it doesn't matter. You guys are all... All this happens. Okay, so that's not possible. The, the <laughs> tournament runs simultaneously through Michigan, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. Uh, all separate player pools, obviously. Um, so Darren Elias will be representing New Jersey. He's also doing a meetup game at the Brigada, or a meetup tournament, maybe. Uh, Andrew Nemi is representing Michigan and doing a meetup game in uh, MGM in Detroit. And I'm going to do my meetup game online because there is no MGM properties in Pennsylvania. So I just get to stream for five days. Get to hang out in my city, eating my ketchup, watching my <laughs> pirates in spring training. Cause baseball's fucking back, baby. That's right. No, we're, we're gonna, gonna talk, talk about, about this that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. No, we're gonna talk about that tomorrow. Don't worry about it. But yeah, that's that's gonna be it for episode one of the Only Friends podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was our third attempt at it, so uh, <laughs> maybe please we got it enjoy right this time. it. We are not doing it a fourth time. <laughs> we are not doing it a fourth time. On that note, we will see you guys all tomorrow. <laughs>